Welcome to the round table. Bill Priestley here with you. Thomas Watson to my left, Michael Vincent to my right. We're going to do a little good idea, bad idea. We haven't had a chance to do this in a couple weeks here, guys. It's good to be no, back. No. It, is, it is good to be back. We yeah. got renewed. All right, it's interesting how orange looks really cool on that car, but if you put it like on a Daewoo. No. <laughs> good point. All right, let's bad jump into idea. these five topics here for you. First off, JD.com is China's largest retailer, and uh, they will now fly freighters with their own pilots, unlike Amazon.com, which has Amazon Air, in which the company leases planes and hires other companies to fly them under their own brand. JD.com is taking, JD is taking the ownership of the entire air cargo process of their supply chain. Good idea or bad idea? We've seen this in terms of uh, ships. Uh, Walmart, Home Depot have chartered their own ships to, to go uh, trans-Pacific. You like this idea of owning your own own plane and moving your own stuff, Mr. Watson. I was going to say good idea. I mean, it's a situation where, at least in the U.S., there's an acute lack of pilots. So if you rely on a situation right now where you're leasing your planes and you're leasing it to a company, there's a fear that maybe they can't provide. But if you control that on your own, like J.D. with China, uh, you know, you have that opportunity to, if it becomes where you have extra capacity, you can use that. You're, you know, it's going to be a little more expensive, but it also gives you predictability. All right. Mr. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't disagree with those comments, but I, I wouldn't do it. I go the bad idea side. I'll, I'll take the opposite. Um, not because I have to. It's just because um, you made me <laughs> mad. No, I'm just, uh, I, I, if you can outsource it, I think it, I think it's better. It gives you more flexibility. It gives it's much easier than managing a bunch of of, of stuff that maybe you're not into. Or you, mm -hmm. I mean, you're gonna bring in all that expertise to actually run that stuff. Amazon is smart enough, I think, to have somebody else do that. That is the uh, actual expert to do this so I think it's always better to have somebody else build the engine if who's more of an expert and you just sell it <laughs> yeah <laughs> and and really uh, it, it's difficult having it if, if it's a private fleet and you can't lease it out to or, or fill that capacity with other people's goods it makes it very difficult for to maintain that density unless you're incredibly confident that you are the next world's you know Amazon which yeah. JD dot com they, 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 I mean they're not chance. I'm not saying they're small yeah. anyway and they're much smarter than I am I would All say right. but I would go the other way okay number two Berkshire Gray conducted a survey of supply chain executives in which they said automation is necessary to offset warehousing a warehousing labor shortage that's right now being caused by reduced applications from younger generations. The same survey said that 76% of executives believe wages will have to be increased and 63% say will need to increase bonuses in order to attract workers. This is in tandem with a different survey which said that 74%, 74% excuse me, of warehouse on floor workers would consider taking a pay cut to work in a company that utilized technology to help their job. Uh, Mr. Vincent, do you think this is a good idea to try and throw a lot more money at the problem and see if you can get more people in or or are you going to throw it at automation? The answer is three, Bob. <laughs> okay. I mean, what is three? <laughs> no. I, there are a lot of numbers being thrown out here, but the basic thread that I see here is that uh, if I was in warehousing, and, and certainly uh, I would be throwing automation at it because I can reduce some costs and attract some people through uh, assisting them with, with, with automation. That's what this clearly says to me. If you can't get workers and you need to raise their pay, yet your workers are telling you that, hey, you can cut my pay if you bring in some automation. That's where I'd be Give going. me some help. Give me some support to do my Absolutely. job. Absolutely. I'd be bit. putting the money into that instead of raising pay for more people to say, hey, I'll take less if you have automation. Automation is coming. It's very, very efficient to do, uh, and it helps workers uh, to do their job and lowers stress on the body and so on and so forth, lowers safety claims. Uh, that'd be the route I'd be taking right now. The Plus, it's a natural step to completely automated warehousing, which is... Yeah, which, of course, is the point that I was yeah. just about to make in that force. Unions may not like this at all, but... Robo exo suits. That's all I want. One. I want one. I will be a tester. I'll be all a Sigourney Weaver and Alien with my Robo suit and fights. Yeah, but gotcha. I mean, so this is an interesting thing. We say the survey, uh, three quarters of them will have to raise and give bonuses to bring you in, but the workers, three quarters of them, says I will take a pay cut after I am in. Uh, the problem is, it's a psychological question. People are loss averse. They may say they will take a pay cut, but that, <laughs> what they do is they will go somewhere else. So I'm going to completely discount this second 
one that says they would consider a pay cut. You just won't get a raise, folks. You'll get your Robo XO suit, but you only get a 1% instead of a 3%. That's how you sneak it in. But yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's an interesting idea. We're going to see this automation because uh, people naturally don't want to do very manually intensive jobs without being compensated for it. And there's a lot of competition in the labor market. So, sure. uh, you know, honestly, great idea to automate, but I think it is kind of humorous just because uh, the 74% would consider take. I've never met anyone who has taken a pay cut unless they had to. <laughs> well, yeah, it really, you're, you're 100% right, Dal. I, I, I'll agree with you there because okay. you have to, I mean, did they take this survey when they got their paycheck open and Here's were trying $10. to pay their bills? Or that. was it at the end <laughs> right. of a shift when they're all sweaty and dying, right? I mean, that, that depends, right? That's a good yeah. point. It's a good yeah. point. Number three, San Jose State University's Mineta Transportation Institute wants to make the country's rail systems more climate resilient, meaning instead of reacting to climate events like hurricanes, wildfires, floods, the consortium wants to look at building infrastructure, or looking, looking, at least look at building infrastructure that would make rail systems more resilient before those events happen. However, some of this is very much in the conceptual stage. The first five projects they've laid out are more about information gathering to see what can be addressed. Good idea or pipe dream to see if they can stop what Mother Nature is going to throw at them, Mr. Wasson? pipe dream. Can we make the rails wider? Can we replace the wood in case of a fire? Should we raise the rails by five feet off the ground randomly in case of a flood? Uh, it's a train, folks. The rail system hasn't really changed much since the 1800s. We just figured out a better way to put a locomotive on it. I mean, at the end of the day, like talking about resiliency, maybe build your tracks on higher ground. Maybe that's one of the five projects, but uh, it's an idea. I mean, I'm going to rate this as it's the thought that counts, but I just, just got to see the humor and how uh, <laughs> making your rail more resilient just sounds like I'm looking for more funding for something. Yeah, it, it's a brilliant idea because you can get some, a lot of grant funding will be thrown at it. So from that idea, it's a brilliant <laughs> it's brilliant because you get money and not produce anything because we're just going to test and hypothesize. So let's spend a bunch of, of grant money to do that. Um, and I, I, here's my first suggestion, though. I think it's a brilliant idea if you can get it done, but I agree with you. What are you going to do? I mean, you can't randomly just change things unless underground. Underground railroad? Oh, yeah. You could start a company. <laughs> you could start a company and and, and call it boring. I'm gonna call Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> and you could bore through the earth. I, no, think, just, I think the boring I railroad. Think somebody's already yes. done that. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Number four, California officials are encouraging ocean-going vessels not to plug into shore power for several days to reduce demand on the electric grid during a record heat wave in that area. Ships berthed until September 9th will have to use their onboard auxiliary power that exits through exhaust and not the cleaner, not use the cleaner electricity. Is this another reason to possibly avoid L.A. Long Beach right now, Mr. Vincent? Do you need another reason to avoid LA Long Beach? <laughs> is I think more Other of the than question. the fact that what there was how many ships out, out there right now? I like, like, like seven. Yeah. Oh, at least there's not 120. Yeah. There there aren't there aren't those anymore. And plus there's a hurricane about to destroy the place, uh, which is which is difficult. We've heard about that. Yeah. yeah. So they're busy getting their railroad more uh, off the ground. Off the ground. They're raising it. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> they're raising they're the doing that so they're not unloading any ships. I don't know. I, I don't know if it's a reason to do it or not because I don't really don't know enough about this. I think it's uh, a little bit humorous and also concerning that they have to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, my confusion on this a little bit is because it was first it was they they had they required them to have to plug in, and 80 percent had to do this right. right? So there mm -hmm. was some some uh, because you had to be required to do it meant that some didn't really want to or have the means to do it and and so and now they're saying please don't so I, i'm not under I, I, um well, i don't know they, if it's yeah. better to plug in or better to just keep rolling on your they want you to use the electricity so you won't have to you know the exhaust stuff that matter goes, and all goes into the, the air stuff but now they is, have to because it's going to put a stress yeah on but i don't know if it's better for the truck for the ship to run on its own or plug in. I, I don't know sure good or bad it seems to be the only idea they have at the moment uh poor california you have all of this stuff working on green sustainability but you can't figure out how to fix your electric grid mm. so now california is in a city well they saved their one nuclear plant so congratulations California, but at the same time, uh, having to burn uh, your stuff, your exhaust. So there, there were complaints, by the way, people who lived on LA, they had to smell mm -hmm. the exhaust from the ships. Sure. Mm -hmm. So instead of plugging it in, you're turning off your air conditioning and he's going to burn more stuff and you're just going to be really hot and smelling of exhaust. So, I mean, I think that it's unfortunate. It's the only idea they have. So obviously this is something that they're being forced to do. You don't have to do it, but I would love to savor the bitter irony of the fact that uh, for <laughs> 
as much as California with their carb rules as well as their mandated stuff for greener energy, they're telling their ships that are off port, please just burn your hydrocarbons next to us while we figure out our electrical, which by the way relies on hydrocarbons. So kind of a little bit of humor there. Uh, yeah, only idea they've got at the moment. So The, the irony word there is sustainability. <laughs> yes. Uh, last one. <laughs> UPS is going to hire 100,000 workers. As I say, they're going to hire 100,000 workers for peak season this year. If you go get an application and complete it, you could be offered a job within 25 minutes. Good idea or bad idea in preparation for a peak season that may not be as peak as in years past, Mr. Wasson. I can hire you in 25 minutes and I'll fire you in five. <laughs> no, great idea. Yeah. Hiring <laughs> process is literally two good things. I'm going to give Michael Vincent props talking about the unionization. This is a phenomenal idea. What happens if you have a strike? I can replace you in 25 minutes, bub. I got scabs. I got <laughs> binders full of scabs. And so definitely a situ great idea just because you hate having to apply for a job and wait weeks. Give me 25 minutes. That's plenty. Mr. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a wise idea. It's a smart idea because you, you're right. I mean, it, it could be a, a massive peak. They could maybe or maybe not be on strike, but this doesn't lock them into anything. They can hire you today and just not call you to work. These are not like uh, union guaranteed to work jobs, mm -hmm. right? And these are not salary uh, contract jobs. These are Seasonal. these are the guys that you, you watch that UPS going down your street and you see that, that young guy or girl that runs out and is running back and forth to the house like crazy for 12 hours. That's this job. Because <laughs> yeah, I mean, you okay. got you have to be around in it to, you have to yeah. be around for like a year or two before the union. There's a period before oh, yeah, the yeah, union yeah, yeah, can yeah. snag you. But I love this idea yeah. for the helpers. Well, that's what yeah. it is, and and they do this every year, and they do it, and yeah, of course you prepare, and if it doesn't happen, you only take in twenty thousand of them. What it what, so right? Yeah, no, it's a good move. Okay, good move. Well, that that's good for this job, segment of move. the roundtable. Thank you both, gentlemen. We'll continue here on Freight Waves now after this break.